everyone. I have been sent this um, book by a publisher to um, review for you. So I've had to, had to push my camera tripod, alter the height of it because it's such a big book. Um, so we're going to start by actually just measuring it. Um, you can see it's called Join the Do Dogs. It's a satisfyingly difficult dot to dot puzzles, but actually the idea is that you join the dots, draw the dog and then colour it in. And it's by Jenny Edwards. So I brought my um, 12 inch ruler. <laughs> it's big, isn't it? So we've got 12. It's about, um, yeah, not quite 14 inches that way. And then this way we've got 10. So for those of you that like me that work in centimetres, that is 35-ish by 25 and a half. Okay, so you see we've got this, this is a nice matte cover. My light is on, it's not reflecting the shine, which is quite nice. And we turn over, we'll have a look at the back first. It's still got this nice colour. It's Skittle Dog, the um, publisher, or that. And it says, um, you've got some of the pictures on the back. And it says, on a mission to make life more fun for big kids of all ages, Jenny Edwards presents 20 furiously ingenious puzzles full of poor sonality and puppy love. Lose yourself in a mindful matrix of thousands of dots and bring these adorable canines to life. Now the publisher did ask me, you know, if I wanted to do this. Now it's really different to what I normally do and I'm not a big dog fan. So I sort of thought, oh, I don't know. And then I thought, I know that quite a lot of you really like dogs and this might be just up your street. So I said to the publisher, I do think that some of the people that watch my videos would be interested to see this. So they sent me this copy. So it's very kind of them. So let's have a little look. So let's open up. Ooh. So we've got a big um, French flap and on the bottom it says, oops, let's put it into short so you can see, I'm struggling to line it up. Jenny Edwards is a freelance illustrator from Brighton in the UK. Oh, it's lovely in Brighton. She creates unique artwork for major magazines, media channels and companies worldwide. This is her first puzzle book. When we open up, we've just got a lovely green um, insert there. And there is our um, sort of title page. See how big it is compared to the size of my hands. My hands are big. So it actually came out on the 2nd of March. Um, so we've got a 2023 um, um, publishing date and another nice um, cover. I love this font. It's really fun. Now here it tells us what all the dogs are. So I think we should look at this page in a little bit more detail. I'm going to come in closer and hopefully I'll be able to show you a bit more I don't know how it's going to be tricky for me to get it under the camera because it's big and I've got a load of stuff on my desk there we go so you can see so we start with a basset a pug a husky we'll go down and back across a mixed breed a schnauzer I'm trying to work out how to pronounce them shih tzu Chihuahua. So I can't get my book back anymore. Yorkshire Terrier. You just have to believe me. Cocker Spaniel. And then we have a oops, British Bulldog. Uh, Frenchie. A Border Collie. A Cavapoo. Datsund. Dachshund. Dachshund. I don't know. Chinese Crested. Golden Retriever. A Whiplington, I've never heard of that. A Lurcher, a Dalmatian, and a Vemariner. I've never heard of that. Anyway, I'm going to come back out so we can turn over together and you can see the next page. I'm going to flip through all of the book anyway, even though we've now just seen all the pages. Um, so you can just have a look. Now the paper feels quite smooth. Um, it's, it's white, I want to say. This is a matchstick mouse book. Okay. This is a Johanna Basswood book, which is cream. 
so you can see it's pretty much white so this is what the pages look like before they're filled in um after they're filled in sorry so you can see someone has drawn joined all the dots and put the lines on the numbers are quite small i have to say um there i'm gonna have to lean in a bit i think to see them they are small but you might be happy with smaller print or i'm using a magnifying glass i think this is why the book is big because there's lots of numbers and you'll see more and this is an example of the coloring being done different types of ways of rendering i suppose so here is our first page so you can see the numbers and if i put a let's come in really close for a minute so you can see i can't come in as close as normal because my tripod is higher so here's a selection of numbers we've put pencil in so you can see it's quite blunt pencil um just how i don't know if it gives you an idea of how small they are really but they are quite small um i just want to I don't I you know I don't want to be negative about the book in any way but I just need to warn you that they are quite small so if you struggle to see then you might be better off considering if you're happy to use a magnifying glass or if it you know maybe not and I find it interesting the different colors now I'm gonna have a look and see if I can find number one it's up here so one is red two is black three is red five is blue Four is red, six is black, seven is black, eight is blue, nine is red. I don't know whether it's directional or quite what. I'm not sure. But I'm going to flip through all the pages just so you can see them. I'm not sure why the other... It might tell us at the end. Who knows? See, see how that's quite thick. I thought I turned over two pages. It's thick. I think it could take a pen. We can try it actually in a bit. That one's round the other way. I'm sure you noticed. That's our husky, isn't it? See, some that one is not so recognisable, but I can instantly see that's a husky. But maybe I'm not very good with dogs and identification. That one I can't really make out at all. That one's a bit easier to see the shape of the dog. That's the Chihuahua, isn't it? I used to walk a Chihuahua when I was young. My neighbour's daughter had one and when she went on holiday um, she would um, leave it with my neighbour who would um, and I would sometimes go around and walk it because I used to like it but it used to make a heck of a noise my goodness so I'm not stepping too long on these because we have seen them but it just gives you an, a little idea of how it looks on the page what's around it you know you could just colour you can do the um, dot to dot and then colour it in and then leave the background or there's a bit of background if you want to do something with it. Some people like doing backgrounds. And there's the last one. Let's just have a look at the back. So there's nothing at the back to explain about the colours and um, we looked at that. So I'm going to have a little go at some of the dot to dot. Um, I probably won't get a whole one done because um, there's, they're so small and there's so many. So I'm going to just start on this first one that I looked at before. And it goes, it starts there at one. And I think it ends, I'm looking around here at 1,234. I think that might be the last one. So that's quite, um, quite a lot of numbers. But they are quite close together, which I like in a dot to dot because um, you can more easily um, work out what you're doing and make sure you're doing it right. If they're too far away from each other, I end up getting a wobbly line, which isn't ideal. I've grabbed a gray, um, very thin pencil to do this with. I'm gonna come in close just and just do a little bit. I just think feel like I need to uh, demo a bit. I'm not going to, as I say, I don't think I'll get the whole thing done. I'm gonna come in as close as I can there we go and start with number one and then just start joining now the reason I'm using a grey pencil and not a like a standard Norris type pencil is because I find the a, a pencil which has a graphite in 
I find can be quite smudgy and dirty looking. Whoops, I did no, 15. There we go. I can count, I'm quite impressed. Oh, I can't get to the middle there. I don't know if you can see my line. I think you probably can. It's quite pale. I want it to be pale because thinking, you know, when you colour it in, you don't necessarily want a really dark line. So actually, that goes to there. Um, so um, you don't necessarily want a thick, dark line to have to, sorry. Um, colour in you might want to sort of try and absorb that outside edge obviously you've got these dots and numbers in your picture but uh, you know that's that's what's going to happen with a book like this 47 48 now I'm not having to get as close as I thought to be honest um, my eyesight isn't always that brilliant particularly um, um, sorry I missed that bit <coughs> Excuse me. No, my eyesight isn't always that good, but it's okay. I would put my head nearer if I could. But try to find number sixty there. Um, it's quite fun because you have to hunt for the number, which I think is different. It's such a long time since I've done one of these. Where sixty-five was there? Sixty-six. Where sixty-six? Oh, there. Uh, you have to hunt a bit, uh, which makes it more fun, I think. I wouldn't want to want it to be too easy. All right, you might as well just have the line drawn for you. So it's just a little bit of something else. And you could, of course, just choose to join the dots and not colour it in. You know, if if that was what you fancied doing. So I'm just going to do a little bit more. Um, confused. I missed one up. I've done a bit wrong. <laughs> I've gone wrong. That bit there is wrong. a bit you would colour over anyway. Let's pretend it is anyway. It's because I'm talking. You need to actually concentrate quite hard, which again I think is good. Okay, so that is... Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do much more on camera because I think watching me join the dots is not going to be um, that much fun for you. Um, what I would do is I will um, join it, I will finish this bit and I will come back and we'll try some paper pencils on the paper and see how it works. I think that would be more entertaining than watching me join up dots. So I'm, going, I'm quite messy and I'm going to get this done and then um, I don't know. I'll tell you how long it takes me as well because I think that's quite interesting. Um, so I'll get this done and then, yeah, as I say, I'll come back and we'll just try a few pencils and things on the paper and see how it how it how it works how it feels it feels nice so we'll see so bear with me and I'll be back right I am back now and I thought I would just do a little bit of coloring on the picture now it has been um, the dots have been joined it might be difficult for you to see in this really zoomed out view that the that it has been joined but it has um, I thought I would just do a little bit on the nose because I've got no idea what color this dog would be but I know what colour its nose probably I'm gonna do its nose black actually so we've got the two little sort of holes here which I'm just gonna mark out a bit more in my black this is a polychromos black and I'm just gonna now the paper is lovely and smooth um, it's very suitable for polys I think going down quite well in fact nice and thick and vibrant so there's our whoops nose you can see actually that the pencil is covering the um, the numbers quite well which is interesting it's not what I would have expected 
I would have expected them to have sort of shown up quite a lot. What something that did occur to me because I am not, uh, I haven't ever coloured a dog before, I would have liked to have seen like either the original photo or a coloured in version to sort of copy because I really have no idea whether how to colour it, you know, what colours to do, um, where, because we've obviously got different bits like got this bit here of the nose I mean is that a different colour to this bit or is that just shaded in a bit um, and the eye what colour is the eye I've got no idea and the ear the long ears what colour are they I mean I don't even know what colour this particular dog is so for me that would have been a little bit more helpful I was also thinking I was going to colour in this nose bit and now I'm thinking um, maybe that would be pink not grey I brought some greys through so uh, not sure. I have to say the paper is nice. Um, as I say, I've almost completely covered the uh, the numbers just by pushing down quite hard. So uh, that's interesting. Um, I've just noticed that I haven't done any of that. <laughs> I thought I'd finished and I haven't. So I've got a whole section here still left to do. I think what I'm going to have to do is um, go away and finish it off, look up a photo of a um, facet um, and copy that and, and do that. In fact, it tells you, interestingly, at the front of the book, in the on this title page here, it says, thanks to Gruff Portraits for allowing us to use their portraits as reference, it's got their website, so I may go there and that should help me and find out. But I did think that we would just try out. We've got on the very last, I mean, we've got a last page. On our, on, I think, we'd try out on here. Like on here, this one's been coloured in for us. I thought we'd just try a bit of pen and see if it goes through. Now I do have, my major problem with this is that because it's such a big book, I don't have a piece of paper that's the right size to fit behind the page. But actually, I have the same trouble with Johanna Basford books because this is an A4 piece of paper <laughs> and it's too big. And I'm going to put it behind the middle of the page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off in a minute and get a felt tip pen and colour over the eye just a tiny bit and see whether it goes through the page. I think it's quite nice to know about pens because this is a book for adults or kids and children might want to colour this in and then felt pen it like this is you know a bit sort of random and um, this is obviously looks like felt pen so I think that might be interesting so I'm just going to dash off and get a pen hang on a minute I don't have many pens I've only got these left from my set so I think I'm going to have to use a red because I haven't got a black I wanted a black because it would sort of go through so I'm going to um, I'm going to do this bit on the eye here that's already red you won't really see it on this page. So that's one layer. Okay, let's peek through the back. Oops. And that hasn't gone through. There's absolutely no trace, no um, ghosting, nothing. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to layer it because felt pens, once you layer them a bit more, they start to go through. So that's the second layer, nothing. Now, these are water-based markers, just for reference. Nope. So this is our fourth layer. Um, so if you had an alcohol marker, it would probably already probably have gone through on the first touch. But I, I don't know where mine are. I've got a couple of Sharpies somewhere. The smell drives me crackers. No, are we up to six? This is such thick paper. No, nope, nothing. So if you like thick paper, my lummy, you're going to like this book. I'm going to go a bit mad. I'm going to go seven, eight, nine, Ten layers. There's ten layers of pen. Ooh, I can just start to see it. 
Tiny bit of ghosting, can you see that? Wow, that took a lot of effort. <laughs> now obviously um, some pens are a bit darker. I'm thinking I might try the dark brown because that's um, darker. I might do it in the middle of the eye. I don't think you'll notice if I do it on both. Two. I'm going to do three layers there. I'm going to do the same over here so it matches or else it's going to look odd in my book. There we go. And let's see. So that's three layers. I can't see that yet. I was expecting it to show through more. That's a fourth. Nothing. That's a fifth layer. Mm, maybe a touch. Sixth layer. Yeah, I can just see that now. So that's six layers of a really dark pen. So that I think is really cool. I think you know if you want to use pens, then you've got this. You can see how good the paper is, and it hasn't eaten up the paper. So if I run my hand, I think it will be dry over there. It still feels smooth, whereas some papers that I've got, if you get it too wet with pen, it goes horrible. It sort of eats up the surface of the paper. So I suspect you could probably use some water on this book. Um, but I wouldn't know for sure. But you would need to find a piece of paper the right size. I have a roll of paper and I just measure it out and snip it so that it's the right size for whatever book I'm using. Um, obviously if the book is A4 then I can just use a bit of old A4 paper like this. But um, that is really interesting. So it's, yeah, very, um, very good for pens. And because it's single sided, you could use your alcohol markers. As I say, I would put quite a few pieces in here. Um, but you could use them and it's not going to ruin your other picture because your picture isn't on the back. So that's really interesting. Um, I'm noticing I can see a little bit of a mark from my black pencil there, just a tiny bit of ghosting. I really pushed it down a lot. So that's quite interesting. So there's the start of my dog. Anyway, he's got a nose. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go away and I'm going to look up a picture. And I'm going to do something probably quite rough. I'm also going to finish this bit that I missed. What I found is, you know, I said I would time how long it took me. It took me uh, more than half an hour <laughs> to just do that. So if you want something that's going to keep you entertained or your kids entertained for a long time, then it will. Um, I went wrong a few times, so I sort of slightly regretted not using a normal graphite pencil because I had to erase a little bit. But that's okay. I also missed, managed to miss a whole section out and lose my count. But, you know, when you're going over up to 1,200, which I didn't quite manage to do, um, you can imagine that's going to happen. But it means it's going to keep you amused for a long time, which I think is a really good thing. So that's me. I'm going to stop talking about the book now. Um, I will put, <clears throat> excuse me, all the information in the description as to where you can buy it from. Um, they haven't sent me a link um, specifically, so I will put my Amazon affiliate link in there, I suspect, um, so you can go and have a little look and uh, and see what you think. Um, I worked out that I think the fact that the numbers are different colours is just to make them stand out better, because when you've got a whole cluster of numbers, if they're all the same colour, it'll be really difficult. So this does seem to be quite random, but there's just not the same colour really close to each other, so it makes it a little bit easier for you to find the numbers. Um, so that was that. So that's me. But that's, a, as I say, it's a bit of a different book, but um, I think it will be fun for some of you. And uh, that's why I thought I would show it to you, because I just felt that some of you would go, wow, that's, you know, really cool. I like that. So um, hopefully some of you have. But thank you very much for watching. Have a really lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>